This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. Uh, so today what I want to do, I want to go through a specific trade setup and show you all the reasons why I think it's a quality setup or was a quality setup. And um, what, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the bigger picture first, and then I'm going to show you why I like to use the bigger picture to help with swing trades. Swing trades are, st are, are trades that I tend to look at as something I'm going to be in and out of inside of, uh, you know, anywhere from a week to uh, 10 days. It can be as quick as one or two days. But typically, the way I scale out of those positions is an, I, I, it can potentially last a couple weeks. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this. And I'm gonna again, I'm gonna use all four time frames to start. But then I'm gonna zero in on what happened on a shorter term time frames uh, that really uh, tell us that this was a stock that we could play uh, again for the next week or so. So I'm gonna get into this. It's UBSI United Bank Shares. Now, one thing I'll tell you is the average volume in this is only about six or seven hundred thousand uh, shares per day on average. That's a little light uh, for swing trades. I typically like to look for st uh, stocks that trade at least a million shares a day on average, and I use a fifty-day moving average of that of that level uh, to do swing trades. I don't really like. I, I don't want to get caught in something where everyone's trying to exit at the same time, and it's it's uh, it's kind of like a burning house with no exits when when the volume isn't big enough. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, the stock trades enough. But this is such a great example. And again, it meets the criteria on the bigger time frames first. And that acts as a backdrop or kind of like it, it's like wind at your back when you're trying to do a trade off the um, off the daily and the hourly. So um, a swing trade for me is when we've got um, the the daily chart set up on a pullback. This is my classic pullback trade on the daily chart. OK, um, and then the hourly chart here is the entry chart. And I'm going to go into that in detail in a second. But first, let's just take a quick look at the monthly and the weekly, uh, because the monthly has spent a pretty significant amount of time working sideways here. Um, it made a move to the upside and then work sideways. And the 18 month is rising underneath. We've got a significant amount of support in place. The MACD is holding above the zero line here. And in fact, um, it's back above, you know, kind of pushing back above the signal. So we've got a zero line, a hold, and we have a cross back above the signal line. And all that took place prior to the, uh, the setup. And then we have a low ADX pattern with green above red. Now, that doesn't necessarily give me a whole lot of information, but just generally speaking, I know I have a significant amount of support underneath. Now, the second part of this is looking at the weekly chart. And this is actually really important because we know that we have gone through a drop and then we've consolidated here and we have um, this sideways pattern that's pretty quiet. And I, I know it's quiet, especially through this portion, because all three D, uh, ADX lines are below 25. So I like to see that at least for two or three weeks. It's even better if it's longer. Um, if they've been skating along for a long period below, you tend to see the start of, uh, of moves. But then notice what happens. It crosses back above the two moving averages, the MACD, uh, gets some separation from its signal line, showing some strength, and Green DI is trying to cross above uh, the uh, 25 level. So those are all really big positives, but we know we have this support, price support underneath. We have a rising 18 MA uh, on the monthly chart right underneath. We have a rising 18 week line uh, underneath. And then we go to the daily chart. And let's zero in. Uh, we've got our classic bolt breakout. So one of the patterns that I've talked about over and over again is making a new high here, uh, kind of like my minimum criteria. And then MACD makes a new high. And I, you know, that's actually going back a little too far. Probably should be comparing this peak here uh, to this peak. And, uh, and then we can see the green DI did the same thing, made a new high. Um, and we had a uh, rising ADX crossing above 25. And then notice on this pullback, 
let's zero in a couple of things on this pullback that are pretty important. First of all, we had, you know, a pretty good size green bar, nothing huge, but a big, decent size green bar and then a decent size red bar. It's kind of like a bearish uh, reversal or a bull bear reversal, uh, 180, bear 180, sometimes it's called. And uh, that tells us we should be looking for a pullback. Now, what's key to me is what happens on these next three or four bars. Do you see the size of these bars? So look at the size of these bars and then look at the size of these. You see the difference in the size? They're puny. Uh, they're half the size. Some of them are a third of the size of these big bars. The other thing, the other thing that I would tell you is uh, we've come back to the breakout level or we're getting in the area of the breakout level. You see how we broke out and then we pulled back and we're in that zone and we have a pinch here. And we, again, we have green DI holding. So I think those are all big positives uh, on the higher time frame. Okay, higher time frame. This is the higher time frame when I'm doing a swing trade. I'm looking for a pullback to a rising 18, which is above a rising 40 after a breakout and has momentum confirmation in two time frames. Now, I know I have that on the higher time frame. So as this is pulling back, I'm going on the hourly chart and um, I am looking at what is taking place in the pullback phase because what I'm trying to do is use this time frame to enter with less risk and earlier, if I can, on the um, on the lower time frame. So the first thing we want to evaluate is on the way up, we had a really strong ADX. And then during the corrective wave, where we go down, rally up, go down, rally up, go down, ADX cannot get above 25. Do you see how there's the 25 line right here? Now, red DI poked up a couple times, but it wasn't strong enough to get the ADX line to actually cross above. So when I see that, I know I want to be a little bit more on the aggressive side. Now, the reason why I would not enter here on this initial ABC down, why is that? Well, if you've watched enough of my videos, you know I don't like the initial... Uh, pullback as an entry. I'm not looking for entry on any kind of strength here because I don't like this overrun. What I want to have happen is I want it to rally up and come back down again. So notice what happens that I believe and I've written a lot of times in my videos or I've talked about a lot in my videos is going into the zone here. This is the zone between the 18 and the 40. All right. Now it rallies into the zone and then it comes out. So why is this important? Well, if you're thinking about it, we have a downside crossover, 18 crossing down below the 40. If this is truly bearish, then this should trend to the downside. I mean, we're talking about a downside crossover, not an upside crossover. So if we have a downside crossover, we have to watch and see how price reacts. If rice, price goes in and it comes down and in this case makes a new low. Okay, we're making a new low. Look at what happens after we make the new low. You see how there's zero follow through? So, I mean, I can really kind of look at this and say, I've got a one and now this is the two, but the two actually overran this low by a small amount. And if you've read my book, you know, there are three ways to make a two. And this is one of the ways where you overrun by a small amount. You go to a marginal new low and then you reverse back up. Now, the confirming evidence is this bar right here because we're kind of oscillating around the line and then we got a really good bar to close the day. That is a good solid bar and we close above the 40. That is an entry bar. You can buy on that bar. I think uh, you don't necessarily have to wait for the very end of the day because it was a good size bar. It was clearly getting back above the 18 after undercutting this low. And again, we went in and went out and it's the two in the decline in, in the reversal pattern. And now we're getting signs that the two is making a bottom, right? I don't necessarily want to wait for the three in all cases if I'm watching this smaller time frame. So, I mean, look, if I did this off the daily chart, I'd be entering on this gap up. That, but that's what I'd be doing. I'd be looking for, that's the pinch play entry, uh, coming down, pinching down, and uh, setting the stage for a move to the upside. Nothing wrong with that. But by going down one more time frame and using this opposing trend trigger, you can get in on the day before. Um, now, 
if you notice, we're going to look at one more thing. Uh, we did have a little bit, so this did go to a lower low. You see how that went to a lower low? But by looking at the price action, I know I've got the two uh, in the one, two, three change in trend. I know I've undercut that low by a small margin and have zero follow through. That's very bullish. When you break a new low, you should have follow through. If you don't, you should be looking for a reversal. So we have that. Then we get this nice green bar. That's the trigger bar. Um, I've back tested this on the uh, other trades. You can go back and look at old videos on that. But you know, this this is a trigger bar for sure. Um, and then we have supporting evidence because actually the MACD crosses back above the zero line. So uh, these are all the ways that you want to be looking at this. But going into the zone, coming out of the zone, and it's a part of a one, two, three, can give you a huge edge when you're looking for entry. Uh, so this is a classic swing trade for me. I look for pullback trades to at or near the 18 rising after earnings. This is pretty important. I have, it's after earnings. I know I don't have to deal with earnings anytime soon. And I have a breakout confirmed by uh, MACD evidence. Look at the price action. Uh, I'm sorry, the volume action confirming the move as well. So we got a lot of pieces of the puzzle in place, not to mention the fact that the bigger time frames were supporting the trade. Hope this helps you in terms of identifying because what happens is you end up getting 10 or 15 stocks that might have this look to it. But if you use all these criteria that I'm giving you, it should be easy to zero in on which are the best ones. All right, go ahead and post any questions or comments and we'll see you next time.